This year alone, nearly 2 million people will be diagnosed with some form of cancer in the U.S. And while, of course, the treatment that follows is the hard part, for many, just trying to get a diagnosis in time is a challenge. Right now, there are routine screenings for just five types of cancer, prostate, colon, cervical, breast, and in some high-risk patients, lung cancer. For the other dozens of forms of cancer, patients are often on their own when it comes to noticing symptoms, finding specialists, and then undergoing testing. All of that can take months or even years, time that without treatment can drastically worsen a cancer patient's diagnosis. Prognosis. That's the problem my next guests hope to solve. Susan Downard is the director of clinical pharmacy at Point32 Health, the parent company of Tufts Health Plan and Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. Peter Church is the chief people officer there. Peter and Susan, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Susan, starting with you, I want to make sure I'm right. I mentioned the five cancers uh, for which there's currently screening. I want to be clear. The notion here is this test has potential to detect some of the most uh, dangerous ovarian, uh, 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 pancreatic, that sort of thing, and others that we couldn't detect this early in the past. Am I right there? That's correct. And and you have a personal connection here, do you not? This is not just professional. <laughs> but it's very personal. Tell us about that. Yes, I do. Um, my father um, was diagnosed with lung cancer um, and he um, passed away after living with it for about 15 years after having a lung removed, being on um, oxygen for a long period of time. And you took the test? I did. Would you have any uh, doubts or concerns about doing it? Were you anxious? I was anxious. Um, you know, I um, actually had an incidental finding um, several years ago that I had a node on my lung and um, I had an abdominal CT. They accidentally found a node on my lung and said, how long have you had this node? And I didn't know about it. Um, and so that made me nervous that I was at risk of having lung cancer. And obviously my dad had had lung cancer. My grandfather had had been diagnosed with lung cancer. He did not pass away from it. And um, so I was concerned um, and interested in, in being screened. And obviously when you got the results, your fears were allayed from what I understand, correct? Yes. Yes. So, so, Peter, you're quoted in the Boston Globe story in the saying employers have a greater responsibility to worry about the well-being of employees in these times. Can you connect the dots for us a little bit and tell us why? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think employers over the past 24, 36 months, we've, I mean, we've all been challenged significantly with the events of COVID and um, the global pandemic and all that it's brought us. But even before that, um, social issues were taking greater prominence in the workplace, ranging from the Me Too movement and, of course, um, with the murder of George Floyd. Uh, it's had an overwhelming impact on the psychology of our workers, um, how people care for one another, what people feel when they come to work, which, of course, during the pandemic, many, many colleagues were at their homes. And so as, as an employer, I believe that there is, we're, we're in the middle of a period of time where there's a bit of a paradigm shift, where the care for colleagues, the care for each other inside of an organization, that's one of the things we have responsibility to do uh, to ensure that people can do their best work, particularly for an organization like ours that cares for so many sure. in our community. Now, Peter, I, I know the test, at least as of the moment, is 949 bucks. is not covered by insurance. Would that situation change? Should there be FDA final approval here? Well, for Point32 Health and our partnership, what we felt was particularly important was being able to offer this as a, as a novel uh, a medical invention, so to speak, for our colleagues at no cost. No, I meant beyond, I meant, I meant beyond your operation. Oh, I apologize. That's okay. Um, no, that, uh, regrettably, that's a little bit beyond my scope, how we would think about that. Um, I, I, my hope would be, and I, and I think it would be that of all colleagues, is that this becomes some sort of a, a benefit or an assessment that you would you would like any other diagnostic in uh -huh. doctor offices, et cetera. I want to get back to that in a second. Susan, I, with great trepidation, I'm going to ask you the following question. Could you explain, I told you before we went on, my science knowledge could fit in a very small thimble. Could you explain how this works in layperson's language? Sure. Um, so I really took this as a patient, but I think from it really screens um, for many different types of cancer. Um, and it does, in the end, um, it, it is a blood test, so it's non-invasive. 
Um, and the test can tell you um, what type of cancer. So you do come out telling that you either um, have a negative cancer signal detected um, or a positive cancer signal. And the positive cancer signal would tell you um, what type of cancer. It's not just you have cancer. Um, it's that it tells you what type. Um, and then you would go for further testing to validate that and to actually, um, you know, confirm some sort of diagnosis. And further testing is key because there obviously can be, and I assume are, false positives, correct? I think with any type of testing, you know, there certainly could be some kind of false positive. You know, Peter, I want to yeah. return to the cost for a second, and maybe if this is outside your bailiwick, feel free to say it. There are 254 members of Congress, a bipartisan group, who are sponsoring a bill that would cause Medicare to uh, cover this uh, test. And I think it may be in part because, as I think probably some viewers know, this kind of test is something that uh, President Biden has embraced as part of the cancer moonshot that he has been doing for years and years as both vice president and now as president of the United States. But there was an analysis done in the New York Times that said if this bill were to become law, and the 60 million, I think, Medicare recipients were to have access to this test, it has potential to raise the overall cost of the Medicare program by 7%. That's a huge kind of number. So in your position, while I totally respect the notion you want to lay a lot of the concerns that employees of yours and others have, do you not worry about overutilization? Well, I appreciate how you preface this. I think I think the probably the general nature of the questions outside of uh, my bailiwick. What I would offer, though, is this: is that when uh, us as an employer, when we think about offering benefits to our colleagues, one of the things we're trying to be thoughtful about is the impact it has on their livelihood, and their lives, and that of their families. Uh -huh. So when we have opportunities like this that has perhaps a front end investment but a huge opportunity to avoid additional costs or additional medical expense down the road, there's, there's real thought that has to go into that. So, um, you know, I've stayed clear of politics uh, most of my adult life, but I, I, I do think it's really important for us all to understand that front end investment of any amount um, that yields huge benefits yeah. long term, that's the eye we need to have. Well, I mean, it's not obviously, let me state the obvious, as I said in the beginning, early uh, detection of even small tumors, obviously, is going to save Absolutely. lives. But can we talk, Susan, this is part of your bailiwick. Talk a, a couple, I wouldn't say criticisms, but concerns. I think most people watching know about the whole deal with the PSA test for prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. Historically, strongly recommended, I think, for 55 to 69-year-old men. And then the fear, then the controversy arose when the notion was that, that it was detecting slow growing tumors that in many cases were harmless and there was a backing off. Do you not worry about similar concerns here? Yeah, I think as a pharmacist, you know, that's a bit out of my scope because I'm not a physician. Um, However. You know, um, Right. However, I think in testing any time, we need to be need to think about testing the right population of people um, and how we use the results that we get. What is the right population of people? Because there's also another issue, Susan, if I can stay with you or Peter, whoever wants to answer this. I assume since there are false positives, as you said before, Susan, with virtually anything, uh, you then do the further testing or imaging, as you were suggesting, is required. If you get that first positive and then you subsequently find out you don't have cancer, it doesn't mean the anxiety goes away. I, I can imagine in myself, it would sort of stay in my, my body. So Susan, starting with you, who is this recommended for? Who is the population? What's the population that should be thinking seriously about taking this when it's available? Maybe Pete could talk about the population that this was offered to at Point 32 Health. Okay, fine. How about it, Peter? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So our initial pass with this was to offer this to our colleagues who are age 50 and older, um, who met certain eligibility criteria. One of the things that we felt was real important was exactly as you say, although not so focused on false positive, but just the possibility that you may get a result that is positive. And so when we introduced this, we also provided counseling uh, to, to those individuals that should you receive positive results, you have the option to reach out and have some additional support and work through whatever additional questions you might have. 
Um, we have since that time extended our population to age 40 and older and uh, who meet certain criteria. So age 40 and older within our workforce are eligible to uh, have access to this. Peter, do you have any idea about what is the likely timetable for this to be more generally available to the broader population? So I know that our commercial markets team and our medical team are, are coordinating w w what the timeline would be for that, but I don't have the specific dates to go with that. Susan, point. you have any thoughts on that or no? No, my involvement really has been as, as a patient who has you know, taken the test. Well, I have to say it is very exciting and has huge positive potential. Susan, Peter, thank you for your work and thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much.